the agenda. Sorry. Uh, I was, I, I'm sorry to, you got that from? Uh, John Tune, John Burns. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Okay, so um, first off, we have item number three uh, is to welcome our newly appointed commissioner, Captain Joseph. Hi. Hi. We have new, do you spell it a K or a C? K-A-T-H-I-E. Okay. And an I-E. I know, I'm tricky like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I'll let Kathy just introduce herself to everyone, and maybe everyone can just say a little bit about themselves, how long they've been, how they're working in the commission. Sorry? Um, I'm Kathy. Hi. <laughs> I'm Kathy. 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 i Hi, I'm John Parkinson. Been a resident of Marinwood for about 25 years. Um, this is the beginning of my second year on the Parks and Rec Commission. Uh, I'm happy to be involved. We, you know, my kids are now out of the house, but when they were younger, they took advantage of all of the things that Marinwood had to offer, and I'm glad to be able to help continue those things for the next generation. Hi, I'm Isabella Perry, and uh, um, I'm the liaison and uh, from the board. Um, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all for um, the tremendous last year of work, and I'm looking forward to this year ahead. I'm um, very happy that we have a nice, solid commission, and um, you all bring such unique talents and abilities to um, to this group and uh, uh, each of us has something to contribute to the community, whether it's you know professional expertise or um, just energy and, and dedication and ability to um, make some improvements here and there. So thank you so much for all your hard work. I'm Eric. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I work as a district manager at three years now. I'm John Campo, I think this is my third year as a commissioner, and I've been in Marinwood for about six years now. I'm Shane DeMar, I'm the Recreation Director. Um, I was here our Recreation Programs in our Parks Department. Um, and I've been with the district almost 20 years. Actually, I'm fairly 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Luke, I'm uh, one of the Recreation Supervisors, and I oversee um, yeah, the pool, all the athletics programs, uh, the adult programs, and some special events. And you've been here since 2009. I've been here since 2009. I'm Carolyn. We met yes, 30 yeah. seconds ago before the meeting started. And uh, I work with Eric in the back office. And I've been with the district since I was 14 in some role or another. And I've been at my current position since 2002. And uh, yeah, I grew up here, so I never really left. Uh, my name is John, so that should be easy to Yeah, there's no yeah, there's no <laughs> <laughs> so just spell out John. <laughs> 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 that was a yeah. unique part of the commission. Two shades. And two shades. Yeah. <laughs> Who we just called John. I've <laughs> <laughs> been in Marinwood for maybe 27 years. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Kathy Fitzgerald. I've been on the commission for, I was going to say three, but Someone said three. Then you have four. I gotta say four. Just a problem. Welcome. And uh, I just to kind of put in context too. Uh, I've been on. I think it's five for me, actually. Um, and I and I served a few different roles. I, I was a commissioner. I was. I think I was a vice chair once. I think I was an alternate once. Uh, so I kind of filled all the stuff. Uh, but to just piggyback real quick on um, 
But as Bella said, I mean, I do think that it's really important that we have civic engagement uh, just in, in our little community. So whatever we can contribute is great. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy to continue to serve as well. Uh, so thank you for the also the board you know, sit back in the seat. Okay. Uh, with that, um, just as you know, uh, it was in, it's in the packet, and just Kathy, maybe this is really just a big, just a quick overview of a uh, review of the bylaws. I think Eric sent, and just as a you know, today one thing we do have to. Uh, do is sit a chair and a vice chair, uh, and you know also just you know as a, an alternate uh, is your role is to actively participate in the meetings and all the and the things and it, really the designation is going to happen uh, is whether your vote counts if you will. Um, so if we have a quorum then you don't your there's no vote, uh, but if we don't have a quorum then you can fill the vote. Not entirely. Yeah. One person, you can have a quorum and still have somebody missing so that Kathy can vote. Right. If every person is here, uh, every yeah. active commissioner, then the alternate doesn't get a vote. But if one commissioner doesn't show, then, then you vote. You vote. Okay. But to Shane's point, you get to participate in every yeah. aspect of the meeting. Right. Uh, just like everybody else. Right. And your voice counts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, welcome. And, um, so with the definition of a chair and vice chair uh, for this year, for 2018, um, I, and, I, and I said and I did the same thing as last year, I am, uh, anyone else who wants to take that, that's totally fine. I do not have to sit here uh, and chair. Um, so I will turn it over to the commissioners to decide um, who would want to who is our current vice chair? That. We don't. Okay. Um, or be you, by the Okay, that's good. Would you like to be chair? I guess that's. I mean, it doesn't say that you have no. to become a chair, but I'm right. just asking. Uh, yeah. Um, it's not anything I aspire to, <laughs> but I also don't want to be critical in the sense that I think if you sit on this commission, you have to step up. So if it's time to step up, then that's fine. But Shane, if you're willing to continue, I'm right there for you. <laughs> so uh, I got you. I <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that at this point. John or John, you guys. Yeah, you guys? You guys are the only other two that can because you have to be here a year. And, right? uh, and you don't get to count previous years. You don't years. get to count previous years. Well, you should. <laughs> I don't know if you guys want to be nominated, but I would nominate you both for the same <laughs> thing you're doing because you have to do a great job. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm happy exactly with, with the status quo, but I don't want anyone to feel like you know, they're not getting a chance. But, but that's my feeling. I'll see you, Shane. Um, there's a, I will, yeah, I guess we will. Um, I'll, I'll put a motion in to, we'll separate it so that we don't feel calmed in uh, to make uh, Shane the chairperson for the 2019. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, I actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, motion passed. Mm -hmm. um, now we need a motion for a vote. Well, I would say if you don't want to be vice chair again, I'm happy. Because originally, to be here to be vice chair. I, that's right. And originally, when Isabel was going up for election, Shane and I had talked about me being vice chair to his chair. And sure. then I disappeared completely. Right. So I just wanted to say that I'm very happy to be a vice chair, but if you are enjoying, no, I, 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 <laughs> then I, 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 I will not take it away from you. To do it, so. can we, we can be co -hosts. No, it's too No. No, there are motions on the table, then it's okay. I still move. Okay. So we're making a motion that I want to be vice chair. Vice chair. Okay. 
I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that's good, we're good? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so moving on to item number five, uh, public comment non-agenda item. Steven? Yep. Hi, Steve. I'm Stephen. Actually, I served here a long time ago. Um, and I just want to say, this is the most important. To me, the parks and rec are the heart and soul of Marinwood. It's uh, one of the reasons why we're all here, at least I think uh, that. Um, it's Maroonwood's a great place to raise a family, and we've got the most creative, hard-working um, rec staff, I think, anywhere. And um, I really think that the mission here is to, you know, provide excellence to the community, and also, in a broader sense, brand our community to the outside world. So you're houses are worth more. I mean, this is a great place to raise kids. And as you know, a lot of families are moving into this area from San Francisco. And they look at, at what we have to offer, and it's just absolutely awesome. Um, so that's that part. The second part is, um, to that point, I would like to see uh, greater care taken uh, with our uh, I don't want to say, I, I don't want to put this in the negative light, bring up the standards of the park to say uh, the trails uh, being more manicured, uh, taking care of uh, the wild areas as well as the uh, planted areas. And um, I guess I could bitch a little bit about the panhandle and the tire tracks, but. Uh, you know, that, that area is worn down. I think it can be fixed, but the bottom line is we need to have a plan. The Parks Commission needs to have a written plan of care so we can maintain consistent, high quality uh, trail experience and outdoor experience for our community. And I have specific ideas that I've, I've communicated down with the board and with Shane and Luke over the years. And I'm not going to go into that right now, but I just just want you guys to think big because this is a big thing that you do. In my view, now I, I've said this at the board. I don't. I believe at some point we're going to be uh, contracting out our fire services, or it'll be merged. And so, what you guys do here is going to define our community. So, anyhow. Congratulations, new uh, uh, people, and uh, thanks for serving, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Moving on to item number six, draft minutes from the uh, November <coughs> PR meeting. Uh, as we've had time to, to review any comments. And we were, if not, uh, oh. motion to approve. That's okay. Motion to approve minutes from the last meeting. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pass the amendment. Uh, item number two is for discussion. I mean, sorry. Item number seven. So the draft minutes from the board meeting is just for review and questions. There's no. Um, Action item on it. Does anyone have any questions from the two January board meeting? Make a comment. Okay. Uh, the proclamations the board made for the two Christmas holiday houses, the prizes and the other one. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. yeah. That, that was very thoughtful. Those have been uh, wonderful for, I mean, you know, like I said, I've been around here 27 years when I was dragging my yeah. kid that big to them, and you know, it's just. That's you know something that uh, is a real draw for the community, and uh, that was very thoughtful to do that for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's so they'll be missed. Do we know if anybody's going to step up and help I heard the Ozone families. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do the Hanukkah go over in our house. You know what? If my kids had to say, that's what our house would look like. So. It's, 
Jeff again. Uh, Gray again. Um, number three, the resolution 2018 National Did you explain that a little bit to me, or just or maybe explain? Yes. The commissioners so, are, uh, well, it, it has zero impact whatsoever on the commissioner. In fact, that <laughs> now that you say this, I uh, realize that I totally failed to uh, move forward on another item. So our insurance company has a, a third-party carrier for workers' comp and going through you know, their language, um, decided that they wanted participating districts, of which there's hundreds, to basically form a resolution on whether they wanted to have their governing body covered as, under the workers' comp program. Ours have been covered for as long as I've been here and several years before that, they just wanted kind of a formalized resolution and it also provided opportunity to put other volunteers under the workers' comp program and I had some calculations that were in the last board packet on what it would cost us to do that for different types of volunteers. Uh, in talking with our insurance carrier as well as uh, I communicated with a handful of other districts, the primary practice in light of volunteers is actually to have them sign a, a waiver and release a liability stating that, hey, I recognize that I might get hurt while I'm volunteering for you, and if I do, that's on me kind of a thing. Uh, so the board continued with the practice of uh, having the board on there. And in a worker comp world, the board is actually considered employees of the district because they have the power and authority to make decisions on behalf of the district, which in all honesty, none of our other volunteers or commissions have the ability to do because the final authority always rests with the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I, I actually had a sample waiver. I have completely forgotten all about it for the purposes of this meeting. Uh, I will absolutely have it on the agenda of the next meeting, or uh, it doesn't even necessarily need to be an agendized item. It's simply something I can email to all of you directly and say, hey, please sign here and give it back to me. And it's just basically stating that you are releasing the district of uh, liability should you get injured in your duties as a Commissioner, so when you walk through the door, don't trip. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on that? It's basically an insurance CYA thing from an insurance company. All right. Here we go. John, John. Oh, John. I got one more. Sure. Uh, number five, your report on that. Miller Pacific from the pool pump room? Sounds, yes. Sounds like it's not as bad as you thought it could be? For sure. Um, yeah. In fact, what they are, you know, I mean, they really said that we have two potential approaches of what we could do. One is do nothing um, beyond the measures that we've already taken out there. When I say we, really, you know, Shane and Luke and the park guys did a lot of work back there. Uh, which was, you know, involving removing an old uh, storage building that was kind of connected to there. They did some grading work, brought down the earth foundation that was built up, uh, and then tarped it. And, you know, so really nothing. And they are recommending uh, to do some grading, so it brings it back more to a natural slope, and then do uh, some uh, covering. Uh, you know, your typical erosion covering, some jute netting, some uh, plantings, things along those lines. To run a gutter, which we've already got that part going. Uh, they do not see it as a long-term threat uh, at this point in time to the pool pump house. Um, you know, they got in there, really looked at the pump house, the fact that the pump house has a back foundation wall of foot-thick cement that is also uh, uh, taller than I am. It goes deep underground, and they just didn't see it as an imminent threat. So yeah, definitely a better uh, conclusion that we came up with, you know, keeping in mind they did all sorts of boring samples, drilled in deep, uh, you know, tested the earth well below surface level uh, on both sites. Um, obviously, this is the one of the greater concerns. So, uh, right now, I have forwarded that on to uh, FEMA and I'm waiting to hear back from them because they're still developing for that. These projects, they're uh, what they call their project worksheets. Uh, where they kind of throw in estimated costs and, and they, you know, they don't just give you a green light, yeah, spend whatever you want, do whatever you want. They want to know what you're doing, why you're doing it, 
so on and so forth, and they have formulas on what they think it would cost to do. But at the end of the day, I budgeted that to be $150,000 repair. It's probably going to be more like $15,000 repair. Yes. Okay. Um, Thank you. Can I ask a question? Sure. About the other uh, slide area, is that to, uh, in the tennis court area? Mm -hmm. where is, is that lost land, or is, are we going to be able to get that land back? Um, it's lost land for the most part. I mean, they're recommending the same thing. You kind of do a grading back down to there, but it, to build it all the way back up, redo it with turf, then you'd have to put in retaining walls and so on and so forth. I don't think that would be a really cost-effective or recommended option to do, uh, especially since we've already kind of fenced it off and done everything there. They don't see a large proclivity for it to continue calving the way that it did. Uh, it could. Uh, their bigger concern are the trees that bookmark both ends of where that is. There's a couple large bay trees in there, and they specifically recommended to uh, uh, remove one of the trees, the one far the south, where you can see half of the whole root structure. They say that thing is pretty well threatened. It could, uh, and if it were to go, it would probably fall across the creek, which would then create bigger problems uh, just in terms of uh, water flow. Uh, and the other one, they don't necessarily say that it needs to be removed, but it should be heavily trimmed back all the same. Um, that answer your question, sorry. Steve. Yeah, I, I was kind of curious. Is that built? Is that land? Is that built-up land? Uh, uh, that Not that I know of. Not that I know of. I mean, they did the same uh, types of boring samples. You know, it's found similar yet. Different, uh, and I'm not a geologic expert, right. uh, but you know, uh, didn't go too deep into there uh, before finding you know a, a much harder clay surface similar to what's found in this area. Okay. But no, to your point, I don't think it was ever built up or become like a landfill that then gave. Right. I guess. Well, I think most of this area is like yeah. if it was pushed down. The original, original grading was just to level. Like everything. by the ranches, you mean, or something before we came in. Well, I'm a quiet one. Right. Lot, that path is pretty much all fill, uh, probably from the original grading um, in the developing of the land. I don't know. Could be. I don't know that. Anyhow, yeah. Irv would be a good person to ask about that. The only reason I ask is it's too bad we have to lose a bit of that, that mm -hmm. uh, field. All right. And just to, just to remind me, um, when dealing with this with FEMA, that emergency order is it's a payback. Like we we submit. Once right. to prove we submit. And they don't they just give you up front. You can do that, but that's not a recommended way to do it. Um, ever since uh, I believe what was it was it Sandy, whatever hit New Jersey, yeah. they passed a new way in FEMA that you can kind of estimate these things out using very set formulas. They give you that amount. If you go under that amount, you give it back. If you go over that amount, you're on your own. Is why we're sticking with the reimbursement. Uh, you know, now when you're talking about millions of sure. dollars, uh, you might want to rethink that. But that's not the case we were ever in. So, okay. um, John, John, okay. Moving on. Uh, that was seven, eight. Uh, item number eight: transition procedures for in and outgoing. Commissioners, and this is, is this the, uh, Eric, do you want us? You want yeah, to I can it? help you out there. Yeah. Um, so this really came from a conversation that I had with Kimberly Hall, and I had uh, informed her um, that she was not reappointed, which, uh, to make it very clear, was actually a very nice conversation with Kimberly, and she was very, uh, gracious and understanding of it, I mean, uh, Kimberly is a thinker and just thought, you know, maybe this is a good opportunity to kind of formalize or at least discuss uh, how transitions of incoming and outgoing commissioners are happening, uh, if there is any uh, means, and a lot of that stemmed from, I had originally invited Kim to also attend the board meeting, uh, we had designed a nice um, certificate of appreciation for that was going to be presented to her in the board meeting. Kimberly was actually sick um, and got in touch with me a few days before the board meeting saying, hey, I'm not going to make it. And that's when the conversation started about everything else. Um, and then, you know, she kind of sent me a bit of an email with a lot of thoughts that I, that I shared. And it, 
you know, just looking at, you know, is there a way, should it be, is it fine the way it is, should we look at when the recruitment timing is, you know, all of some things would require potential recommended amendments to the bylaws uh, and the way that that is written, just strictly from a timing of when you're recruiting to allow more recruits, bringing people in, doing more, and then having more of a formal transition, like is that at the December, it would have to be the January meeting because they make the uh, things in December, we don't have a December meeting, but in the January meeting, is there an opportunity for, you know, kind of a more formal welcoming and an exiting or what, you know, I mean, so just in, uh, again, you know, Kimberly being a thoughtful individual, just, you know, it's kind of moving in some of those directions, so I told her that I would be happy to uh, uh, talk to Shane about it and see if this made sense as a uh, agenda item, and Shane and I did talk about it, and that's kind of where we're at. So it's just a matter of, uh, you know, really what the most of discussion of the commission on what they feel is the current process good? Should there be something done a little bit differently? I don't know. Yeah. How long had Kimberly been on the commission? You know, that is a wonderful question. Uh, it predated me. I, it, we were having a hard time finding an exact date, but I want to say about eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. I've since we started keeping original uh, appointment. It was, she was a long time before I joined. Yeah, well, she always referred to herself as doing like eight or nine years. I mean, it was long enough to warrant a level of recognition for her uh, service. Uh, and again, I'm hoping at some point it would be nice to be able to present her something in a uh, more formal setting. Uh, you know, she did do a Tom Kunkel 28-year run, uh, which, you know, I doubt we'll ever see something like that again. But it's uh, uh, long enough. You know, for a good period of time, uh, you know, and, and part of the conversation I had with her was, you know, just kind of in instances where we had this going on, which is, in my experience, the exception and not the norm, where we had more people interested in being on the commission than we had spots available. And, uh, you know, to Kimberly's acknowledgement and her points was, you know, a lot of times it makes sense to in those situations to allow and be more open and inclusive to the community and allow new people opportunities to join the commission and in the result of where you don't have somebody a natural spot that's open maybe it makes sense to look at you know who has the longest tenure on the commission and, and kind of moving in a cycle like that i don't know that i fully agree with that as a straight line method of uh, how to go about it um but i get it yeah i mean sad to leave some, to have somebody who has that information about how the commission was working and various things that we've tried. And, mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's true that we need to have openings for new people. Not that we should. Yeah. Well, I don't disagree. I mean, I don't know what, you know, as well as a board director uh, who ultimately has these uh, decisions to make. And, you know, I don't know if you have any thoughts on it. I, I don't know that I would... Person, my personal recommendation, somebody who's sat on the commission I know might see it as, you know, having a steadfast rule in that way. Uh, I think everything needs to be looked at for the situation that it was. And in this situation where you had that opportunity, um, I'm not saying that that was the board's motivation behind it, but it certainly kind of got that sense from the discussion of the board of, hey, this is a good opportunity to bring somebody new on. and. Uh, while we are certainly very appreciative of the years of service, maybe it makes sense to, you know, somebody who's been sitting on the commission for a long time to have them step aside so you can get new thoughts, new ideas, and new uh, interest into the commission. I mean, for a long time, we had an empty seat. You know, we had a hard time getting some seats filled. So this was a nice change in that aspect. And I think the board saw the opportunity to, hey, we have some new interest in the commission. Let's get them on the commission. And, uh, and go from there. That's just my two cents. I'm not speaking for the board, but that was kind of what I walked away from the appointments that were made with. Yeah. Currently, yeah. there's no formal rule on right. in going and outgoing. Right, right. right. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't want to speak for the entire board. I will really speak as the private individual. Um, I think in, um, in any commission, um, there, it's a, it's a fine balance between um, you know, embracing uh, new interests and, and being welcoming to um, new um, members of the community who choose to be more engaged and, um, 
and that's spectacular, and it's always welcome. And um, you know, I will be the cheerleader for the year with the contest. Yay! Go us! Um, but at the same time, um, seeing how at the end of the day, um, you know, what what do we bring to the table? Um, can we uh, do we offer a particular skill set that's that's very valuable to our community? Um, can we um, you know offer time and uh, you know just sweat, labor, whatever it is? You know, so um, I think it's really um, it would be difficult to set a clear policy. This is how it's going to be done because um, we would limit ourselves and why. So I, I think, um, in my personal opinion, um, it seems things are working okay. Because um, Kimberly had such a great run, you know, plenty of years of um, contributions. Um, you know, we welcome Kathy and, you know. I, I agree. I, I, I don't think it would be wise to lose the latitude of the, the discretion of the board. It seems like ultimately the board would have that choice. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, you want to hope that the board members are some of reasonable people, most of them are. <laughs> and, um, you know, we'll, we'll choose a um, community member who will hopefully, you know, be the best asset. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can't Um I agree, because whenever I got talked about it, and I, and I thought about it after I hung up the phone, it's like, I, I agree, I, do, I don't think it needs to be a hard line based on seniority, because I think that there is and there are opportunities where seniority is not the thing that needs to be changed, right? I think that, you know, not, like I said, not speaking for the board, or how the board as a group decided, um, and I think part of it is also looking at mix, right? What's the ratios of what do we have? You know, how many, what professions do they do? What are the age of their kids? Do they have kids? Are they, are they new to the community? Are they new to the community long time? Right, so I think all those things should factor in to the makeup of the commission and having that ability to, to look at that. Um, so that's one thing. And the second thing that I would say to that is the thing that, of all that, the thing that is a little sticky for me that I would like us to do and, and maybe continue a discussion on is more of the transition piece. Because if you take somebody who served for a long time, you know, we met in November, we don't meet in December, and then we were in January, and it was like there was like, it was like a hard slap finality to it. Um, and so I don't know if, like I said, it, it's, a, it's a rewrite of the bylaws, but that is there a transition line? You know that there. I mean, I don't. I don't know what that does. I don't know how that shakes out. But I feel like there needs to be this almost so, handoff. So, so if I may recommend, um, it would be advisable to, like Eric suggested, move the. Uh, uh, we have now finally a spreadsheet for a couple of three years now that uh, you know, outlines exactly who is up for reappointment. Okay. Um, if we start this process earlier, we post the openings um, earlier, we don't necessarily have to keep it you know, that long, and this way you will gain the time that you want to you know, acknowledge the commissioner's work and on the commission level, and then maybe, maybe even appointing somebody sooner than when we did, so that there is that like transition where you're kind of like the vice whatever, for that chip, for that position, so that there is that transition. Again, you have the power to rewrite the bylaws, so you may want to draft an amendment for next meeting, and then I uh, John and then John. Two. No, um, <coughs> I'm glad to hear all your opinions because I'm kind of in the same mindset. There are things in the letter that maybe just insinuated in the letter that I didn't find they really disagree with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely think it's a you know a decision of the board to, to make your best decision. And I don't think it's behind closed doors. I think it's right. the line. I just uh, I think uh, unfortunately you know Kimberly wasn't here at the November meeting. So it was mm -hmm. not only 
know, December that she, you know, so everybody wants to take some time. So it's, and I, I can see a transition, you know, maybe, you know, bring in a little bit more and stay one, you know, one transition maybe when you're both there or something. I don't, you know, something like that, I don't have a problem with, uh, you know, you, I, I think it works well the way it is, but we can, Along those lines. I, would, I would think it would be good for anyone who served on the board, especially as long as Kimberly had, to have the opportunity to, you know, come to basically a last meeting and, you know, have an opportunity to share their, you know, final thoughts or whatever, you know, just as kind of a professional thing to do. So I just throw out there, if you want to make seniority by age, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, and to be clear too, I mean, I forwarded Kimberly the uh, packet and everything, made sure she understood that this conversation was on the agenda. I mean, you know, she knew she could have she come down. So uh, it's not. Like, right. Yeah, I think just in regards to the transition piece that you were kind of everybody touched on now. I I don't know if I personally think there's a lot of value to the transition as some kind of a hand off of institutional knowledge because I feel like this body has the institutional knowledge so that it's always transitioning and there's always enough people here to know where we left off to keep moving it forward. But I, I think just as you know, I don't know, kind of a good neighbor humanly yeah. thing to do to have her come in and like, you know, thank her personally and hug her and say goodbye and we'll see you around the neighborhood. Yeah. Is there any I'm just trying to think of, you know, like moving forward. I mean, is, is there, and I'm not making a suggestion, but in listening, is there any, <coughs> right now the appointments are made at the December meeting, and that's the way it's spelled out in the bylaws, probably in the board bylaws as well as both commission bylaws, for a, you know, then for the January appointment, basically the new commissioner starts in January, so they run with the uh, calendar years. If, if the appointments were moved to November by the board, yet they still didn't start until January and then outgoing commissioners would still have that final November meeting, right. you know, which happens two weeks after the board meeting. Right. If, if, that is, if that is at all worth exploring, I mean, I'm certainly happy to uh, work with whomever wants to or even just draft up something myself in terms of the uh, a very minor amendment to the bylaws. We can bring it to this table for some language review and bring it into the following meeting, assuming it gets the consensus agreement here. Yeah, I mean, I would like to, you know, add to when we get to future agenda items just so we can talk about potential drug. I mean, I, I, I'm happy to take a stab at it also. Great. Um, of, of a scenario. Yeah, and then yeah. maybe depending on what uh, the result will be of the conversation and the board bylaws to make a suggestion. Yeah, and you don't have to wait till future agenda <coughs> because this is a topic now. I mean, we can already designate it as something to be uh, added to the oh, okay. agenda. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, related. Um, so, uh, one of the subjects that always comes up why don't people want to be part of this commission? And I got to say, the communication with the public is insufficient. None of you have your email addresses on here and I would suggest the following is well I'm sorry Shane um, uh, that you you do a quarterly report you know this is what the, the board's been up to we welcome your suggestions and have an email address to contact so you know we're looking for your ideas start a dialogue with the community um, I think you'll find if you set forth a a vision and you communicate that vision to the public, the people will respond and go, hey, that's a great idea. I want to uh, volunteer on this state to do that or whatever. And uh, so it's just a little bit of a sales thing that I think would be beneficial to the community. You guys are the most important uh, commission in town of the two. <laughs> anyhow, you're, you're, you're important. Thanks. Thank you. Where would we put this quarterly report that you think that people would read it more than they're reading everything else? Well, I'm, I'm just curious. 
what your ideas are. Because There's a website, so it would be on the website. But if, the per if people aren't really looking at the website already. There's an email class list. I've never gotten an email unless it's from camp stuff. I'm just, I'm just saying, I, 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 I agree I, with I, you. I, it I would understand be nice what to have you're saying. People, it's, but it's a response. What I'm saying is take on that responsibility that we're going to communicate. We're going to start dialoguing with people because we want to do as great a job as we can here. We can't do it without the input of people. Um, well, what is the mission of the Parks and Rec Commission? It's part of the bylaws. I can't recite it verbatim, but it's, it's out there. I remember writing it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we, I mean, my understanding would be that we're to advise the board on yeah. things that need to be taken care of within mm -hmm. the Parks and Recreation the, the mission is there, I'm looking at it again. I, I venture to say that it's on the website. Let's yeah. even no. <laughs> no, no, I, and I, it, you know, thank you, Stephen, because I mean, you, you do make a point how we communicate, how, how it's there, but like, you know, I, I do think that there is a, there are opportunities, whether it's a quarterly report, whether it's at events, you know, things like that. Um, you know, I, I do think that. Um, to Stephen's point, I think if people come to like, let's say, music on the park, she's like, okay, we come to music on the park and they see all this, you know, the community gathering together, you know, there's a lot that happens to make those things happen, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we make recommend again, you know, as we the same with how we communicate, you know, we make some recommendations to the board of how like measure eight funds are done, right? So when we do a measure eight project, we should celebrate that project being done. By the you know from with community, and so I, I get you know what I'm saying like so I'm not right this guy I think it's just it, the more we talk to our neighbors uh, and share and hopefully ask them to help out they may not have to stay on a commission to help they can yeah. do many things so I, I I think there are ways and I, I, I appreciate it yeah I, I mean all I'm saying is a paragraph or two start yeah start personalizing the experience that's all yeah thank you well I mean I know that I talk to parents at the park and I. When I was on the board before, I would ask them periodically, do they have any thoughts or anything? Is there anything they wanted? Sure. And I had a few parents, but most, I have never seen anybody show up, you know, when I kind of told them about stuff. But uh, I think yeah. that it's, it's right, but I think that more of a dialogue with the person versus like a paragraph in our reviews or up on the report. Because in order to involve people, who are not involved right now, a lot of times it's that they're at capacity with the stuff that they're reading, and it's literally seeing them at the park and talking to them is going to make more of a difference. And then I'm not going to pull stuff out. Well, 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 we were talking about adventure playgrounds. Yeah. If you said, hey, we have this idea for adventure yeah. playgrounds, what do you think? Send us, a, drop us a line, boom. That's all. Um, thank you. So I will. Oh. No, if I just may suggest uh, good points, and uh, uh, if you make it an agenda item, maybe for next time we could uh, maybe bring a couple of ideas to the table yeah. about like you know how to improve the communication, and then we could maybe have you know, tangible uh, assignments, mm -hmm. point plans, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um, just to wrap up eight, then I will uh, I'll work with Eric and um, draft and we'll, we'll have it as an uh, item for next month, um, and kind of acknowledge what what could make sense from the, the transition standpoint. Um, some more coming up. Okay, great. So uh, moving on to item number nine, uh, update on the. Maintenance facility replacement initiative. Sure, I gave you guys a memo in here. Uh, nothing in here is new that hasn't been shared openly before, uh, primarily in board meetings, you know, kind of giving updates. But I know I get asked from this group from time to time, hey, where are we going on? So I just wanted to put it on with the opening, discuss if there's any questions, where it's at, what's happening. Uh, I'm not going to read the little paragraphs that I put up here, but it. Uh, pretty clearly tells you this is where we are at this point in time. I guess I kind of, are there 
two different companies a good enough sampling? Um, the third is just not responding to For design? Yeah. Yeah, I think we're okay. good on that, on that part of it. Um, you know, we reached out to three different local people. I had a little bit of a back and forth with the third one that, that eventually uh, it was just fourth and it, it, the back part wasn't happening. So okay. I just kind of walked away from that. I, I do have the two uh, proposals in hand. Both are fairly local people. Uh, and both would be good, so. Okay. Well, what would, what is the next, you know, basically hurdle to get over, I guess, once, the, you know, the architects have given proposals in order to... Uh, well, I enter into an agreement with them, let them do their work, and part of that scope of work is going to be preparing the site plan review application that, uh, that will include their work, plus the biological site assessment, uh, plus the uh, site plan. We had a topo down in that area as well that kind of got incorporated into the site plan. I'm just waiting on a couple little tweaks on that. Uh, uh, some other markers I want to make sure that they have. Uh, and then anything else that needs to go into that site plan review application and get that submitted into the county it becomes a much more of a uh, formal, it's not a building permit by any stretch. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like a pre-application process, but a little bit more so than a pre-app. We've already gone through the consultations and everything else. Just these are all the things that uh, they had advised. You might as well include this in there, because if you don't, we're going to come back at you and say, what about this, what about that? So we're just trying to, you know, it's the, the key takeaway from the consultation that we had with them. Um, and we're using their companies that they would have told us to go back and use, right? We, well, they, we have used, the, for the biological site assessment, a company that is on their approved list yeah, of vendors. Yeah. You know, like they, the county will not recommend and yeah, say, that's, use that's these guys I mean, or yeah. use those guys, but they gave us a list and we had some familiarity with a few of them. And uh, I know uh, that the county and, the, you know, their open space and parks have used uh, one of them in particular and they're highly reputable. So that's what we pulled in to do the biologic. Uh, they did a really nice, thorough report for us, which I appreciated. Uh, all of that stuff, I, I guess I should have put in here. I mean, all of this stuff is on the website. Every time I get something updated about this, um, I tag it on to the appropriate page on the website. So the complete biological report's up there. Uh, everything is to where we currently stand. So what do we need to sign one of the architects and get a moving? Um, just the final agreement, I actually shot him some final questions today saying, hey, can we also incorporate this? And then uh, he gave me a uh, time of materials rate um, and acknowledgingly, and I don't disagree with him. It's hard for him, uh, especially after phase one. So there's really phase, three phases involved with an architect. I can't remember if I really put that into here. One is the simple, not simple, um, one is the first kind of design phase that goes with the site plan and all that for the site plan review. Uh, after you get through that process, the second would actually be uh, construction drawings and things that would become part of the building permit uh, review. And then the final piece of that would be construction oversight to make sure that it is happening in accordance with the architect's plan. So. Uh, until you get through this first phase, it's hard to know what phase two is going to involve or then what phase three is going to involve. A lot of it looks at the complexity of it. I know that the rate he has quoted is uh, significantly lower than your uh, typical going uh, rate on this that you'll find, especially in this area. The local person that is happy to kind of have something to work on, has connections with the district, so on and so forth. So that's a good thing. Uh, once he kind of gets back and there is a board member I've been working with and sharing all of this kind of stuff with, the project's budgeted. Uh, neither of us, uh, you know, it, it's something that I, I feel and we feel I already have the authority to enter into this uh, first phase. It's got a seven day out on the contract. If it, you know, for whatever reason, the county just says no way uh, and we're not gonna be able to push forward on something, which is certainly a possibility. Uh, it, there's no reason, we're not committed to using the same person for phase two or phase three, is my point. You know, this is... Both of the architects gave us TNM? Um, yeah, well, one gave a flat rate for phase one uh, only. 
uh, and really going to touch on phase two. The other one has been much more involved, has had a lot more questions, actually has taken it upon himself and went down to planning and talked to some of them about some of the stuff uh, and issues, uh, which is probably the direction that I'm going to go. Yeah. Uh, just because there's a lot more, you know, it seems like a lot more involvement and a lot less of a cookie cutter kind of approach than the other one does, uh, understands the needs here a little bit more, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, yeah, and then, you know, honestly gave us a flat rate, so like, this is just gonna be my flat rate for all services that include the drawing, you know, I mean, some places will say, yeah, the drawing fees are gonna be this much, the permitting fees are gonna be that, you know, this is just flat average rate, which I also appreciated and that, uh, you know, kind of gave us the guidance that he gives other clients is that in projects like this, look, you know, look at total construction costs, 80% being hard costs, meaning, you know, people ought to be doing the building and 20% are going to be your soft costs, which are going to be architect permitting, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times architectural of that is about 60% of your, 20% of your, so I was, you know, we were able to kind of gauge a bit of a round number that to his, uh, Understanding and defend and credit uh, has you know isn't willing to commit to because you don't know what the scope of his work is going to need to be until you're doing it. But the rate is uh, extremely reasonable and pretty close so okay. for what the services are. Um, so that's you know that's where we are. Okay. Did you get any kind of a time frame for this? Uh, I think we can get moving on that part quickly once we kind of enter into this. Like I said, I literally. Uh, Got his uh, you know, kind of final proposal last week, shot back to him today after a couple of people had a chance to review it that uh, said, hey, uh, and some of the stuff was I just wanted it, it, more things clearly spelled out, even though I know we talked about them. <coughs> How about we get it actually written into here, uh, which is like, you know, preparation and submission of, say, the site plan review, but, you know, just little things like that, and then just saying, okay, uh, again, realizing these are only estimates, but I'm kind of breaking down the potential of total costs that if uh, you know we're looking at a hundred thousand dollar building, twenty thousand of those uh, in soft costs, sixty percent of that is twelve thousand. So is that a fair, rough estimate? And then can you tell me what percentage of your total time you think would be spent on phase one versus phase two versus phase three without actually committing to these, saying oh, I don't take me ten hours for this and eight hours for that, just in your experience. You spend 50% of your time in phase one and 30% and then 20%. Uh, just so I, I want to have something a little bit more concrete in my head, even though I, I can't, I'm not going to hold them to that. Yeah. Do, you, do you think it's reasonable to have something for the board meeting? Uh, I'm hoping to actually have something signed and moving before the board meeting, to be quite honest with you. Uh, again, I mean, the project's been greenlit to a degree. It's been budgeted to a degree. The scope of its services are well within my thresholds to go with, and I don't think that this is a standalone separate agreement that we need to take to the board and say, here's this, here's that. Pick one, because um, they don't have five different, you know, I, I think at some point you just got to take it. And I certainly have been involving our most, uh, uh, let's just say experience board oh, member of this cool. stuff with Irv uh, Schwartz has been uh, working with me on all of these things. So it's been a great asset. Okay, Shane, can, can the commission talk before the public talks though? Isn't that the way it works? Yeah. yeah. Oh, with the sure. Sorry. Okay. Um, um, do we think that there's any expectation or ability to get this constructed before the next printer? That's the goal. So, okay, that's still a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, now, with that said, my larger fear is turnaround time at a county level. Planning department is so backed up and so short-handed right now. Uh, I, I really can't even begin to give you an estimate on how long it's gonna take them to get back to me on a site plan review, and then how long it'll take them to go through their processes. If based on that we then keep moving forward on this site um, with you know, building application uh, permitting and everything else, so that's um, where you pull your soft skills and you engage well, there. You, and, well, and just, you do, yeah, and, and, and they like us. And we've already got a planner who's already it started working with us on this and has already said, "Hey, make sure that when you submit this stuff, you let me know because I'm already familiar and I'll be happy to kind of go in and uh, request to be assigned to this one, uh, uh, so on and so forth." Uh, so, you know, that's my larger fear, 
Right. It's just how long that process can take, but we're trying to dot every I and cross every T before we give them something. Uh, so that way they don't then shoot it back and say, oh, you're missing X, Y, and Z for this, please add this, and then get it back to me. Um, we're trying to get everything, if not more so. Right. It just seems like there's still a, a lot of pieces. Well, it, it, it is a hell of a process. Yeah. And then you're still talking about the bid process. You're yeah. still talking, you know, it's, uh, uh, yeah. For but sure. it's, and, it's definitely, to me personally, it's the most important project. Absolutely. Now this person that we were working with, we do a soft submission with them where we hand them everything and he looks it over and says, They don't have the capacity, they don't have the capacity okay. really for that okay. at this point in time, like a desk consultation. Yeah. Like uh, just I like mean, that's what our initial consultation okay. was for. So they gave us a good indication of I would, you know, if I were you, I would include this, this, and this. Yep. Otherwise, we'll come back at you, or we might even say, "Hey, we're going to do this." So, like we yeah. we did the biological assessment for around four thousand dollars. The county chat charges fifteen thousand yeah. dollars to do yeah. it. They would have used the exact same firm, most likely. Yeah. That we paid a hell of a lot less to do yeah. it directly ourselves. With. Um, so you know, I mean, there's other steps. You got other CEQA things that we'll have to deal with, things like that, and you just have to cross those bridges until they tell you no, this bridge is not crossable or they let you buy. Okay, uh, so I'd like to uh, save everybody, the community, a lot of money and a lot of grief. Uh, but before I launch into that, how many of the people here were at the meeting a year ago with the public? I know you were, Shane. Three, four, five? Um, in that meeting, which is recorded, there was a lot of concerns about locating it where apparently uh, the commissioners wanted to locate it. And um, I, number one, I think if you're going to go ahead and ignore the wishes of the community or not vet it in the larger community, you're going to have some objections. And why is that? Well, what is the purpose of the park? The purpose of the park is for recreation and enjoying our open space. The current footprint of that maintenance facility is about, I'm guessing, two acres. I'm not sure. We've got three guys there. And it's a three-guy landscaping crew that has not huge responsibilities. Um, and it's a massive footprint. To put a basically an industrial facility next to a protected stream bed, protected uh, a waterway, is I mean it's foolish and it really takes away from the utility of the park. Now, I have mentioned this before. I'll mention it again, and please listen. George Lucas had his studio project canceled because of environmental concerns from the um, <laughs> Department of Water and the Fish and Wildlife. And um, it, although they said it was the neighbors, it was actually the regulators that clamped down on that. If you're going to put uh, an industrial facility with industrial chemicals, uh, cancer cause, you know, bad stuff next to the creek, I will personally object. I will also bring in uh, environmental groups to oppose that. And I, I don't want to do that at all because I, it's just a waste of time and effort, especially since we do have an alternative right next to the firehouse, which has never been seriously uh, considered at all. And I, I, I think, you know, quite frankly, if you go forward, you're going to really mistake, be, be mistaken on this. The other thing is, if you do go back there, the size of the facility is ridiculously huge. A three-man crew normally would have maybe a one-car, the equivalent of a one-car garage or a two-car garage. That's it. And that's all you really need uh, for the equipment required. Now, you may have to reconfigure some of the uh, equipment, but it can be done. We don't need a dump truck. We can do, make do with the trailer. So. Um, there's EIR problems, there's a lawsuit problem, and, and uh, it's going to get very, very expensive. So the big vision here, and I said uh, one of the reasons 
why I want to keep that area open for the enjoyment of the community. That area is absolutely perfect for an outdoor uh, preschool kindergarten right along the creek. You could put a, an, adventure, uh, a, a, an adventure playground right there. The, the uh, trailer could house uh, a preschool and we could make 50 grand a year or 100 grand a year, whatever, whatever the figures are, and um, actually pay for the new maintenance facility out of the increased revenues. I just think, don't be foolish here. The, the community doesn't support it. The regulators won't support it. The environment won't support it. And to, to go ahead without, you know, with all these red flags, I mean, it's just foolhardy. So, um, and, and you probably don't need a custom building when there's plenty of uh, off-the-shelf buildings that most maintenance facilities use to house their equipment. It's just, it's, it's actually astounding to me. We started off with a, uh, uh, a steel building, I think it was going to cost $7,000 or $10,000, and now we're up to architects and fancy drawings, and, and uh, it, it just, it's going to be very, very expensive. So let's, let's put our money into programs and our efforts into good things for our children and for our community. And that's why I was here. Thank you, okay. uh, thank you everyone, for coming and uh, update. And we'll move to item number 10, which is the PR maintenance activity report. <coughs> yeah, I don't have anything additional to add to the reports. Um, from a rec side, uh, just highlighting that our summer camp registrations right around the corner. Um, February 12th for our residents and for members, uh, and then two weeks later on the 26th for non-residents and um, non-full members, and that's always an exciting time around here. Um, our review is currently at the printers, and we hope to see, receive it in the next two weeks. Um, we also have an open registration date on February 5th for our um, after-school programs. There are kids that are currently not registered and I believe we're only going to have about five spots open, so we're expecting the parents to be camping out the Sunday before. Um, but we'll see how that goes. And Luke is currently working on the Raise a Glass Winter Wine Tasting, which is our next event on February 24th. Um, which is always a very popular event. So we have uh, 12, 13 winners. Uh, Thank you. Can I ask a question about the after school, like the registration, because there's probably going to be five, five slots. So those slots get filled literally by someone standing at the door in like in a row? So yes, this year, next year, we're going to do it all online. Um, we've given out information to some parents that they can register in person as well this year. So yeah, we're expecting people to get here early, uh, you know, be first in line to register. Right now. So. The, my last one, does it make, and I don't, I don't know if by doing it online, I'm just trying to think of the, with a very limited spot with the high demand, like how do you, how do you like, how, like how, who's first, you know what I mean? Right. So um, I don't know if like a lottery system works, like you hand out tickets and like, I, I mean, I don't know if that makes any sense or not. We're, we're still discussing it, that's why I said <clears throat> next season it'll be online only, that way technology can decide uh, who the recipients are, the spaces. Uh, we. I don't know much information. Well, we're going to ensure that at least the first few people who show up at the door will receive the spot. Could, could you, I don't know if it's, you know, um, but just thought, um, give a, a priority to Marino residents in terms of uh, registering for aftercare? Something else we, we talked about for next year. The ship has sailed this year just because we've already given out a lot of information. Um, but because it's, you know, we keep waiting for Santa Fe to open up more spots, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So, so it's something that we definitely. I talked to talk with somebody who had talked to the schools. They were trying to figure out why they like how they can hire. So it's not with the school; it's with the city. And yeah. what I was told is that they pay so poorly that they can't find anybody within. 
this area who can do it for those hours and that amount of money. It would have to be like, they'd have to find people, but then they wouldn't be able to get here during those times. So my general suggestion with our limited funds, limited space, limited everything, if we could open up more spots, we would, I mean, clearly we would get them filled because it would, what was it, like three times over the amount of kids that we had last time we had in wait list. But I do think having more regular residents be first come first, and then if there's other spots, open it to them. Because it's really not fair for those of us who live in this community to try to like bus our kids to other, or have, hire a nanny to like come get your kid to bus them to some other place. Right. To go I mean, them. it's definitely something that looks like we can implement for next season. It's just the information I've given, how we can get out so many people with this school situation, it's more complicated than just not having staff. They do have a staffing issue, but that's not the reason for the members. It's a licensed program, so they're filling the capacity, and they haven't been very creative on how to increase the capacity, whether it's utilizing classrooms or building additional temporary buildings or modular buildings, because um, we've, we've been in contact with them. It's, you know, even as recent as a couple weeks ago to see if they're going to be opening up more spots so we can give people information that didn't get into our program. Um, but no, they've got like 100 and something people or 200 people. It's like a two-year reading list or something. So yeah, it doesn't seem like they're really trying to yeah, meet the demand. Does the city run on-campus after-school programs or licensed? Yeah. Why? From the other license. They even advertise it as a license. I'm program. sure at the end of the day it has something to do with the teachers' union. <laughs> and the fact that they have to run a very distinct operation. <coughs> It's, so it's like, it doesn't like matter as a working it's, parent, you know, it's, yeah. like, it's, it's just crazy. It's, it's a Marengo community center. I agree yeah. that like, if, if we can give a nod to our local taxpayers, I think that's a nice gesture. Because yeah. it also makes you want to come back to camp. And I mean, we, we increased the overall number by five, I think, in the next season. We arranged after school classes and so that we could still shuffle everyone. But yeah. Gonna build out this classroom, double the space, we can take more kids. I'm really good with fires. I can build it out right now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good question, Shane. So, if you had the space and facilities, you could do another thing. Okay. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm making that point, obviously, to utilize that space uh, where the, the maintenance uh, trailer is. And that would make money. That would bring more money for more good stuff and staff raises. Um, uh, and then, um, anything just from a not going to go to the board, but on the park side? Uh, no, just that we've been focusing heavily on the pool um, to get it up and running. We're hoping to turn the heaters on at the end of the week. Um, they have lifeguard training classes starting in mid February, and then the water level start up right for that. So we've been able to clean things up and get them up and tip top shape. That's it. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, thanks, Jenny. And uh, thanks for coming. Good. Uh, any, uh, moving on to item 11, any court requests for future agenda items? Well, <coughs> this is going to be a future agenda item. I just wanted to follow up on the uh, <coughs> Lions Club cleaned up the uh, Miller Creek exit off of mm -hmm. 101 yeah. on December 10th. Uh, we, you know, we had probably 30 plus people out there for a couple hours. We were limited to where we could go, we had to stay within the shadow of Miller Creek Road itself. We couldn't go up and down the exit ramps for Caltrans instructions. But we did the best we can, and I think it looked a lot better. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're making headway on that, though, with Caltrans. Yes. Yeah, I haven't talked to John Hammond lately. <clears throat> I know we're looking at Lucas Valley at some point. I'm just waiting for him to pick a day. I, uh, I got an email from John Hammond recently that it sounds like 
he's been able to bridge that gap with Caltrans. He had actually asked if it would be at all possible to uh, borrow some district equipment and wasn't very happy with me when I told him <laughs> that, yeah, that's just not something that we can do. Yeah. Um, and I actually suggested to him, uh, I said, you guys are getting a lot of really positive buzz out of this. People are talking about the work that was done. It's getting the Lions Club some really good publicity. Hopefully maybe drive some membership into the Lions Club. But it, uh, even if you started a, a, a very specific fundraiser, to you know, like renting weed whackers cost 100 bucks for the day or whatever. Yeah. I said, you know, if you did a very specific fundraiser, you know, through direct appeal, through GoFundMe, through, you know, getting the word out, you know, through basic social media platforms, I donate to it personally. And depending on your date, if I can arrange child care, I'll give you some of my oh, sweat equity. I mean, we well. have people at that. We'll bring a few out. Yeah. <clears throat> Just take care of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I guess it might sound like you rent. They, you guys rented a couple or something last time. Do we? Do. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, especially on that power equipment, it's just not something district can lend out yeah. of it. So, I mean, we make our guys go through all sorts of safety uh, workshops and things on it. But, right. I mean, I felt bad telling them I, I can't do that because I, I, I think that the cause is incredibly worthy. It's just yeah. not something that the district can do. But uh, it does sound like he's getting close to getting a date set for the rest of the work. Good. 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 Thanks. It just makes the other side look <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want, you know, I take the Lucas Valley exit yeah. myself. So I was like, come on, let's get this one. <laughs> yeah. Looking like, you know, you're not going into Hillbillyville. <laughs> well, I need to end up involving an underpass there. You yeah. Know, all sorts of collection. All right. Can I ask a question about the Queen, Queenstone uh, burn? Is, is that stuff that, that the Parks Department did? or? No, that's county fire. Okay. And they, they collected the loose wood up there or something? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, with that, uh, move on to 12. Can I get a motion to adjourn? John Tooney. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You don't forget the chocolates. Okay. Right, are we all in future agenda items of bylaw stuff? Yeah. Thank you. Of course.